Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Today we are going to be talking about whether or not you should still be working once you become a millionaire. So Kirby, this you probably have more insight and knowledge on this. You are a millionaire and you do still decide to work. So if you could share with us what you got. All right, for everybody else that's out there, Alex tried to play coy and try to pass it off on me. Uh, but Alex is there. Alex is there. Forget what you believe. Alex is there. He just don't want to claim it. And uh, <laughs> but anyway, so this uh, illustrious million, this million that everybody search for, people get confused on what a millionaire is. A millionaire is somebody that just worked. That means asset minus liabilities is totals out to work a million dollars. Usually, if you have assets, so let's just say you invest in the S&P 500 and you got a portfolio that's sitting at a million dollars. Really, your cash flow from that with just dividends, if you was taking dividends out, maybe what, $20,000, $30,000 a year? If so, $20,000, $30,000 a year, can somebody live on $20,000, $30,000 a year? Depending on their lifestyle. So it's not because I'm worth a million or I'm worth $5 million, or I'm worth $10 million. That I'm bringing in five, ten million dollars a year in income. If that was the case, then what would be the point? Uh, but it's all dependent on your level of what you want your life to be. As far as work wise, I until the day I die will be working on something. Now, will I be working for somebody until the day I die? Hell no. But I will always be working on something. It's working on my businesses, working on my real estate, working on my stock portfolio. I will always be working, working, working. My mother-in-law always say, she said, you work so much. I bet you when you sleep, your brain is still working because you work. So and I say, yeah. And then that's the difference between people that sit behind the desk and manage and make sure everything's right. And then, you know, just a physical labor worker, a physical labor worker or entry level worker or mid level worker. They come in, they do their job, they forget about the job until they got to go do it again. But when somebody is owning assets, owning real estate, owning businesses, you're always taking the ways to make it improve to eventually make more income and make life better for you and your employees and your portfolio. Uh, but for me, it's always about striving to do more. I don't strive to do more, to make more, to go live a leverage lifestyle. Could I stop? Uh, working and do nothing and just sit there and have meetings with the people that run with my property managers, people run my business and do nothing. Yes, absolutely. I did that almost eight, nine years ago. I passed that level eight, nine years ago. So, but my lifestyle is very different from what everybody else's lifestyle is. Me in my twenties and my thirties, I travel all around the world all day, every day. Dubai, so many times, I can't even count. But, so my life is very dumbed down where it take, if I want to go bare bones, if I want to go bare bones, it take me about $2,500 a month to live. $2,500 a month. I make that off cash flow easily. I make that off dividends easily. I make that off of selling covered calls easily. But, this game was never about what my life was going to be like. It was to ensure that my kids' kids' lives would be better. And they won't have so much money where they can't do nothing, but they can be able to do whatever they wanted to do after I'm long gone. That's my goal for being a man. Yeah, it makes sense. And, you know, I going back to, we haven't mentioned this on the channel, but like, we've had this conversation before where just working to have something to do, you know, I mean, as far as working for somebody, I think that's the biggest question people have or the biggest uh, goal people have is they don't want to have to work for somebody once, you know, that millionaire fate, you know, goal is reached or whatever. But I think it's just up to the individual if they want to keep working or not. Some people get bored in retirement. Um, but if you are, you know, like, as you say, managing assets, owning businesses, there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of ways to keep improving. And um, we've also had the conversation and I like this of until 
you can't until your time at that company or your time working for somebody else is not as valuable as working for yourself that I, you know, at that point you should be deciding whether or not you should be separating from that job because at a certain point, you know, you, I know somebody that still works a day job and that day job is costing them money because of the businesses that they have outside of that job. And at that point, you know, you really need to make the more important decision of leaving that job to go full on with your, with your businesses. Yeah, for me, for me, it was never my goal when I started this, it was never to, Hey, you want to make so much money where you don't work anymore. That was never my goal. My goal was make so much money where you don't have to work if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. My other goal was when my wife retired, I wanted my wife retired before the age of 40 to retire at 38. I wanted that to happen. And then still to this day, it's my wife was going to retire from her job before 40. And then if she wanted to do something else, she could. And then lo and behold, my wife's, you know, she dabbled in some things. My wife's a, a busy bee, you know, she came from a family where people always work, work, work. So for, you know, first six months, she was enjoying it, of doing nothing, doing nothing, you know, going to the gym, going to volunteer at certain places, volunteering at shelters, volunteering at uh, the uh, the Humane Society, the animal shelters and things like that. But it was just, you know, actually looking at our channel and just, just talking about different side hustles and things. So my life goal now is to, you know, test to see what we're saying on this channel was correct or not. So... So then, lo and behold, she starts another business, but the business is not something that's time intensive, labor intensive. And it's something that my wife figured out that I figured out when I actually moved to Florida and I didn't work for two years. I just sat here and just, you know, I still traded the stock. So I worked in that capacity, but I didn't leave the house or anything like that is you retire and everybody your age is still working. Everybody's so you can't go out and have coffee, go to the bar at noon only people there at the bar at noon is bums and alcoholics trust me i, I went that's i know who there that's, i know who there it wasn't it wasn't nobody there it wasn't no cool people there because you know everybody's off doing their thing and then you know the infamous go out and travel but i've traveled so much i'm nauseated with traveling i'm nauseated with hotels i mean alex you hear me every time i gotta do a road trip i'd be crying before i even hit the corner of the street that i live on you know hotels don't like them. Rental cars. I've been through that process hundreds of times, you know, in different countries. It's just like, oh, so everybody would try to fill that time with, you know, traveling and things like that. But I'm going to give a secret out there to everybody that's out there. If you have a million dollars, let's say you got a million dollars in cash. If you're in your 30s and 40s and you plan on traveling for the rest of your life, that'll get you probably to 40, 42, you get about four or five years of that and then the money's gone. Then what do you do? If you don't have access to generating cash flow and you living only off the cash flow, not the nut of the million dollars, and the cash flow has to be, you know, 10, 12% of that million dollars to have a decent lifestyle. You know, you can go on some uh, fairly, um, I'm not going to say cheap, but uh, very financial conscious vacations. Then you can pull it off. You can pull it off like that. But most people, they still have debt. They still have, you know, house debt, car debt, credit card bills and things of that nature. So they can't just fully veg out on veg, uh, vacations because they still got to pay all that other stuff. My life, my lifestyle, my needs lifestyle is very minimal. Like I could lose it all tomorrow and still uh, go get a minimum wage job and can afford my lifestyle. I mean, my biggest bill, Alex, you know, my biggest bill is going out to eat. And I go out to eat. I go out, you know, but that's the biggest bill I have. I don't have, you know, car payments. I ain't got, you know, house payments, all that other stuff. The only debt I have is with uh, real estate. That's it. And all the tenants and stuff pay for the real estate and bring cash flow over. So the money, even now, my wife retired at 38. She still don't touch her, her pension or retirement money. That money, she don't even touch that. That's just more money we just load up just to go get more assets to bring in because the cost of our lifestyle is just so low. But that's the thing people need to understand when you hit that infamous million, that don't mean you got a million dollars every year. 
that means you just got a million dollars in assets minus your liabilities. But most people got liabilities, so they really ain't worth a million. They probably got a million assets. So that's really what it comes down to when you're talking about millionaire status and things like that. Will I sit there and punch the clock or anything like that for the next 20, 30 years? Hell no. I'm barely struggling for the next four. But 45, and Alex, me, you talked about this for a while, but I know for sure 45 will be will be the it game for that. Uh, I plan on getting more ultra aggressive on doing some investments, got some things in the queue we're going to talk about on this channel, but just a million won't get you far, especially in America with the inflation rates and cost of living and the things that people want to do in retirement, but they can't. So the goal is make a million. And if you in a position where you can work, if you want to work, then keep doing it. There's money on the table. If you ain't got nothing to do during that time frame, and this is the last thing I'll say about this, Alex, we always talk about it. And people ask me this question all the time. Why do you still work? And I always give this answer. Once work interfere with what I'm doing on the outside, not the other way around, not if the outside life is interfering with my job. If the job interferes with what I'm doing uh, in my own personal life, then I got to give it up. But the eight hours that I devote to that don't interfere with what I'm doing. But eventually I will grow and grow and grasp more assets that the time will be taken up. And then when that time is taken up, then the job has to go. But the way I manage stuff and automate stuff and put stuff in structures that is not time consuming at all for me to do the things outside of the regular nine to five work, work time, work block from 7 to 4.30 in the morning. So I have to ask, so that $2,500 a month that you would need to live on, does that include your $1,000 food budget? <laughs> no, 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 no. I say if I needed to. That, that, no, no, see, that's if I needed to. If I needed to. So that's just going to the grocery store and just eating at home. But, I mean, okay, it would okay. be a little bit more than three to four a month if, if you add in that going out budget, you know. So, right. but if I, I mean, us, us, for us going back to that lifestyle, I mean, I'm glad you brought up that point. For us going to back to that lifestyle of just sitting in the house eating is easy. It's, it's, it's an easy transition. I just go out just to really talk to other people or whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't want to cook. And then I'm not one of those guys that be like, oh, my wife, oh, you got to sit in the kitchen and cook for me every day. No. If you don't feel like it, that's the only thing I do is ask my wife, what's for dinner? She hesitate, we leave. If she don't have a plan, we leave and go somewhere to get some need. That's it. But sometimes I'll be like, hey, what's the dinner? She'll be like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. All right, then I sit here. I mean, when we was going through the grind of nothing, it would sit at home and eat the bare minimum every day. So that's not, you know, a hard time ain't a hurdle for us. But yeah, that food budget will kick it up a notch. But just necessity wise, it's about twenty five hundred, and that's including everything. That's car insurance, that's utilities, that's food. What else? What other bills people got out there? That's cell phone. That's all. Everything that's encompassed. Wi Fi. Yeah. It's about twenty five hundred dollars a month. Me and my wife, we we checked on that a long time ago. So that was one of the things when she was like, when she was uh, reaching thirty eight, and I was all right. You can punch the clock now. It was. Are we good? I was like, yeah, so we always did the math and we always cognizant of, of what's our bare bottom line number. So we passed that a long time ago. But for me, like I said, I will always work doing something the rest of my life. But will I work for somebody for the rest of my life? Hell no. With all that being said, guys, let us know down in the comment section what you think, what your thoughts are on if you should retire or not. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you